conclusion of sort of a toe or a Father God, you are worthy. You are worthy of all praise. Lord, we thank you for your many, many blessings. Thank you for your love and your mercy. For all that you do. Lord, we thank you for salvation above all. Lord, we pray as we look into your word this morning that you would speak to hearts. Lord, make yourself evident in life. Have your will, have your will. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to go to the book of Matthew. Chapter 14. <clears throat> the stuff that we talked about in Sunday school and stuff that's been talked about ever since we got here and this scripture that God has given me all goes together. God know what he's doing or what? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 14. We'll break in at verse 22. You all know this scripture. Brad. Go ahead. Touch me on. Look down here. Verse 16. Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. Not only to eat, but the finances, the medical, the healing, the whatever we need, Jesus said, give them, give it to them. You know, he supplies our every need. <laughs> Amen. Matthew 14, verse 22. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. When he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Stop reading right there. I want to, Butch already mentioned this, but previously in this chapter, before we broke and read it, uh, Jesus had fed the 5,000. And the disciples were there. They were not only there, they took a big part in what happened there. 
Uh, we all know about the, uh, the five loaves and the two fish and how Jesus blessed it and break it and he gave it to the disciples and had the disciples hand it out. The disciples saw that in the beginning there was only five little loaves and two fish. Uh, they saw Jesus take that and they saw Jesus bless that and then Jesus gave that to them. And they saw with their very own eyes that as they began to hand that out that it increased and it increased and it increased and not only did it increase enough to feed all those people but they took up 12 baskets full. And, and if you'll read the account of this that I just read uh, over in the book of Mark, it, it also says there uh, that they had forgot about the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, how many things has God brought you through? How many things have you seen the hand of God move in a way that previously you thought would have been impossible? You thought there was no way this could happen. There's no way out of this. But you saw God move. You saw the hand of God. Uh, you saw him uh, fix your finances. You saw him fix your health. You saw him uh, repair relationships. You've seen him work and you know what he can do uh, but when the next storm comes along uh, you forget about what God had done before That's right. the disciples saw all this happen experienced all this took part in all this saw the mighty hand of God took part in a miracle and then Jesus told them to get in the ship and to begin their journey to the other side uh, I want to tell you something. Uh, Jesus left this earth and he went back to heaven. But he said to those of us who are born again, you've got a journey to make. I want you to get in your ship and I want you to make that journey. Uh, we're on a journey to the other side. That's right. Amen. Can't wait to get there. Uh, but it's not a smooth journey. It's not an easy journey. Uh, they began to take that journey. And it says that uh, they got out there and in the midst of their journey. And a storm came up. And the winds became boisterous. And they were being tossed about. Now I want you to understand uh, that a huge part of these people uh, that were in that ship were fishermen. They had been on that way. They had experienced storm. But this must have been a doozy uh, because it had them all scared. Uh, even these people who had experience, you know, we've gone through things in this life. We've had troubles and we've had trials. We've experienced many, many things. A lot of them uh, we go through with just a little trouble. A lot of them we go through with a little more trouble. But every once in a while there's one that comes along uh, that is a big one. And it gets us to that point where we're worried and we're scared and we don't know what to do. And we begin to fear. And it's at that point we forget what God had done before. We forget the miracle working power of God. We forget the provision uh, that God supplies. Uh, we forget the healing uh, that God supplies. We forget all those things in the midst of the storm. Mm -hmm. I want you to notice this. Jesus told his disciples to get in the ship and go to the other side. And again, I'm going to reiterate this as we go. That's exactly what he's done to us. Amen. He said, you've got a journey to make. You're in the ship of life. You're headed for the other side. It ain't going to be always smooth sailing. Storms are going to come. He told them, get in the ship and head for the other side. And he went up into the mountain. And he sent them on their way. Now listen, I want you to notice this. It says, and when evening was come. And through my study, that means somewhere around 5 or 6 o'clock. When evening was come, he was there alone. They were all on this ship. So we know uh, that he sent them somewhere previous, prior to evening. Because that evening he was up there and he was alone. So probably 4 or 5 o'clock we'll say he sent them on their journey. It says, but now the ship was in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. They're in that situation, they're in that circumstance. Uh, this one's a big one. This one made them forget about the miracle that just happened. Made them forget about all the things that they had seen Christ do. Made them forget everything that they knew before uh, because this storm uh, was such a storm that it took their entire attention. It took their entire focus. And that's all that they were looking at. Uh, it says, the ship is in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves. 
for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, the fourth watch of the night is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Jesus had sent them probably 4 or 5 o'clock. So it was quite some time uh, that they were sailing. We don't know how long the storm had been going, but they had been alone for quite some time. Uh, and it says that they were out there but in, in that storm, but it was a while before Jesus came. You ever been at that point where you ask, God, where are you? You feel like you just ain't there. You ever pray and then it feels like uh, you're, the, the ceiling's made of brass and your prayers aren't going anywhere. You ever been in a situation or a circumstance or have a burden and you pray and it seems like God ain't hearing you. I want to guarantee you something. He hears you. He sees exactly what you're going through. He knows exactly what's going on. Listen to what it says here. Uh, they were out there and they were in that storm. It says, when the ship was in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, the wind was contrary. If you look again over at Mark at the account of this, it says he saw them toiling and rowing. He knew exactly where they were. He knew exactly what was going on. He was watching over them. Though they couldn't see him. Though they couldn't feel him. Though they had forgotten everything that he had done before. He was still watching over them. I want to tell you something. That is the same Lord who is watching over you today. If you're going through a financial situation, if you're going through a medical situation, and whatever it is that you're dealing with, he is watching over you. He hasn't forgotten you. You are not on your own. Even when you pray and it don't seem like you're getting any answers, even when you pray and it don't seem like your prayers are going anywhere, he is watching over you. Amen. It took him a while to get there. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. He's God, I'm not. But he got there in time. Uh -huh. The ship didn't sink. Nobody was tossed overboard. Right. He got there in time. Anybody ever hear that song, Four Days Late, Too Late? Uh -huh. Talk about when Jesus went uh, to Lazarus. He's never too late. Amen. He's always right on time. Right. He's there at the perfect time. And he'll be there at the perfect time in your situation, in your circumstance, in your problem, in your trouble, in your trial. He will be there at the perfect time. Amen. That's right. That's right. I want you to remember this. If you forget everything else, you are never alone. He is always watching over you. His eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Uh, he's there. Uh, because he didn't come yet, don't mean he ain't coming. Because he didn't come yet, don't mean he don't know what's going on. Because he didn't come yet, don't mean he don't care. He does care. We talked about it in Sunday school. Cast all your care on him because he does care for you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Those disciples were out there tossed and thrown around and scared and worried. Ever been there? Amen. Uh -huh. They forgot. What Jesus did before. Ever been there? Uh -huh. Let's be honest. Yeah. I have. Because I'm so focused on the here and now. Right. I'm so focused on what I'm dealing with now. I'm so focused on the wind and the rain and the lightning and the thunder uh, that I forget. That's right. That's where these disciples were. But Jesus saw them. He didn't come immediately but he came at the right time and he always comes at the right time it may not seem like it to you it probably didn't seem like it to them he couldn't get there quick enough for them they would that he would have came before the storm ever started mm -hmm. but he came at the right time that's right it says in the fourth watch of the night jesus went unto them walking on the sea and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled, saying, there's a spirit, and they cried out for fear. Listen, God don't always work the way you think he's going to work. He don't always do what you think he's going to do. The answer ain't going to come always the 
way you expect it. And a lot of time we miss it uh, because it ain't what we were looking for. Uh, they weren't looking for somebody to come walking across the sea. Uh, they didn't recognize that as being the answer. And so they became more afraid. And a lot of time we do that. Uh, we don't see the hand of God in the midst of our problem and our trial. And we don't see it because we're not looking for it. That's right. We're looking for the skies to open and the sun to shine and rainbows to pop out and bluebirds to fly around. And we're, we're looking for something else and we miss what God is doing. Mm -hmm. It was in the midst of the storm that they saw Christ out there. That's not what they were looking for, so they didn't recognize it. Mm -hmm. The answer was on the way, but they couldn't see that the answer was on the way. A lot of time, if you get your focus off the storm and start looking around, you can see the answer is on the way. That's right. But a lot of time we miss that. Mm -hmm. Had they recognized him, what would that have done for them? Mm -hmm. That would have given them courage. Right. That would have given them hope. The storm was still going on, but they would have had more hope. Mm -hmm. They would have had more courage. They would have had more faith. And it's the same for us. I, I want to tell you something. There is not a time, and you can disagree with me if you want, I can't give you chapter and verse, but there is not a time when God is not evident. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you just look in the right place. Mm -hmm. right. And a lot of time we don't. That's right. But if we would, and we would see God, our hearts would lift. Amen. Our courage would come up. Our resolve would stiffen. But so often we're like the disciples. That ain't what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. And so their, their fear grew worse. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. I, as I told you, he will come right on time. And when he comes, that's the words that he has for you. Uh, I'm going to put this in my words. I'm not trying to rewrite the Bible. But this is basically what Jesus says to us. I'm here. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. You ain't got nothing to be scared of. I'm here. The storm was still going on. Mm -hmm. The boat was still being tossed. The wind was still blowing, but Jesus was there. Amen. And he said, I'm here. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Don't be afraid. I am here. And so when, when he said that, uh, we all know this. Peter said, if it's you, bid me come unto you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And Peter stepped out of the boat. And he began to walk to Jesus. <coughs> then he took his eyes off Jesus. Mm -hmm. We do that. That's right. We'll get to a point where we decide, all right, I'm putting it in God's hands. I'm trusting God. I'm believing God. He'll handle it. I talked about this in Sunday school until tomorrow. That's right. When it's in my face again. And then I quit trusting God and quit looking at God and start looking at that situation again. That's what Peter did. As long as he had his focus on Christ, as long as his attention was on Christ, and nothing else mattered to him. As long as hey, he was uh, dead set on Christ, that storm was still going. The waves were still rolling. The wind was still blowing. The lightning was still flashing. The thunder was still booming. But as long as he had his eyes on Christ, he was walking above it. That's right. Amen. But as soon... As he paid attention again uh, to the storm, he began to sink. And that's what we do. That's what I talked about in Sunday school. We're up, we're down, we're up, we're down. Because we can't keep our attention and our focus on the answer. We can't keep our attention and our focus on the answer giver. We can't keep our attention and our focus on Christ. Uh, we can't keep our attention and our focus where it needs to be. We get so caught up in everything that's going on around us. That's right. Immediately, when he took his eyes off Christ, he sank 
in that problem. He sank in that situation. He sank in that situation, in that circumstance. But he cried out. He had enough sense to cry out, Lord, help. Mm -hmm. This is what we need to do. When he was walking to Christ and had his eyes on Christ, he was all right. But when he started looking around and got his focus off of Christ, he began